Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Legendary Iron Man, Exquisite Timing. I call this run uh, the Revenge of the Exquisite Timing, as it is the second attempt to get that feat on the highest difficulty. I think world first, unless someone can point me to um, a person who has actually done it on Legendary, uh, yet alone Legendary Iron Man with permanent dark events. Um, today we are going into Operation Tomb Star, which is great because it will counter one of the worst uh, dark events that we could uh, t uh, uh, could uh, theoretically face, which is a permanent closing of uh, the black market. We're at the end of March, so not too bad. We're doing uh, good. And I was thinking about the supplies at the beginning. I wasn't so happy about the supplies, but by thinking about it, you know what? It's not the end of the world because 180 supplies means I can go for a med kit, yeah? And I can go for a flashbang grenade, two of the things that I wanted to uh, get anyways, and just leave it uh, as is, because I will get um, the um, the uh, supplies back, and we will not be supply starved. So, in terms of our team, uh, we will take Zirke, Hayward, um, Bones, and uh, Renvin uh, with us. Zirkim can take the flashbang. And Renvin is going to take care of the explosives. Bones, unfortunately, doesn't have an inventory slot yet. Everyone has the DLC weapons and we just need to protect the device. So how hard could that theoretically be? The Chosen cannot appear on this mission because we have beaten her in the last mission. So she has a two-mission uh, two cooldown uh, timer, which means we're free to uh, rain terror down on the normal enemies. Let's go. And we have landed. Protect the device is usually one of the mission types that I like the least, but at the beginning it is not too bad. So let's see, we started uh, mainly because uh, the device has a lot of hit points comparably to the damage that the enemy has taken. We got that nice little L-shaped um, sewer tile here, which will help us right from the get-go I am on the move moving up a tiny bit uh, we don't have any high ground we could theoretically go <coughs> in here but I think we're not going to do that instead how about we are taking some solid full cover over here. Zirkim moves over here for better aiming angles and Hayward moves into half cover. So far nothing has happened. Enemies are starting to move towards uh, the location and we see that there's a second pack here. All right. Not the end of the world. Let's start with killing the Advent Trooper. There we go. Good job, Sirkim. He's never disappointing me as a sniper. And there's one of our posters. <laughs> nice. Can't really take away the cover of the sectoid, <coughs> which is a shame. He is standing behind non destructible cover. Um, he will probably not move, so Overwatch really doesn't do a, a, a hell a lot. I will make sure that we do have full vision. I found their patrol. And let's just take the shots. There is no downside of taking a shot with um, Renwin's weapon because it has a built in stock. And this here is almost 50 50. Yep, didn't hit. 
but it's fine. It's going to be a resurrection. Nope. Okay, fair enough. You guys want to play rough? I'll show you rough. There we go. Shrapnel. Zirkim here can easily detonate the shrapnel with his nice squad side. And that's two down. We got a bit of, uh, of destroyed loot. Not totally optimal. I'm not taking the 50-50 here. We're taking the 100% destruction. So that's four down. There's one last pack and I still got enough explosives to remove cover. Don't want to move to here because there's he's probably running into the direction of the next pack. Which is why Hayward is just moving in. Yep, the last pack is back here. Moving up. There's the alien patrol. Unfortunately, nothing to remote start. But that would always, uh, almost be asking too much. Moving in closer. We still got plenty of time. Moving into full cover and moving into full cover. Plus we're going to overwatch. Another overwatch here. Okay, let's move a bit closer. Nope, cannot reach either of these guys. I'm trusting you. Zirkim is going to take a high ground with good aiming angles. This here sounds about right. Reload, reload. And we're overwatching. It's another shot. All right, what's the deal, Zirkim? 50-50. If he does not hit, the pack would not count as triggered. If he hits, the pack has lost one of its soldiers immediately. And they don't know where we're coming from. Just a perfect starter. Moving up. We're focusing on those two pranksters over here. Nice, that was good. All right, we're taking high ground and good aiming angles. 
That's a hundred percent shot. Hayward takes the kill. And this here will be a kill as well. That'll bring us to the situation where we're of course being spotted out. But I was pretty sure that he's going to use reanimation because that has a high priority for sectors. Okay, and then we have another grenade of some sort. It seems that the answer is no, which brings us to more radical measures, aka heavy weapon to the face. And that should be a kill. There we go. Unfortunately, no loot. Oh, well, we got some bonus. <laughs> the bonus loot that we destroyed even dropped. Look at that. I didn't know that. Learned something today. If he re reanimates the soldier uh, where the loot was destroyed and that um, soldier dies later, you get the loot again. Good, here we go. Do we get a promotion? Probably not. The mission was too easy. Oh, we get two out of it. Well, shouldn't have said that. Look at that. Um, we're definitely going for Lightning Hands because it's such a great ability. And Hayward here takes Revival Protocol. Nice, an advanced scope and data pad. Well, that is some awesome loot. You have done an outstanding job of eating the <laughs> well, everything falls in our favor so far. We're doing great. The only shortcoming is we don't have another scientist. Resistance contacts. Hmm, that's a good one. Do we want plus one resistance contact? Well, it would only get us to four. We still need to build the resistance ring. But we might get around not upgrading it, which in return saves us um, money and energy, which we can use for others. Resistance contact is usually a good scan, so I'm trying to take that just as well as energy. Um, because those are permanent scans. Yeah, he's. Uh, we're we're now finding out that the aliens are doing an avatar project. Who? Surprise, surprise. Good. Proving Grounds. That is exactly what we were looking for. Choose the project and let's begin with the skull check right away. Yeah, we're going to reduce it to 10 days. We're going to reduce it to 10 days uh, so that we immediately can benefit from it. I think the experimental weapons might not be uh, the best choice that I had made. Mainly because they are all proving ground projects and we're not uh, using the proving ground. 10 days for an instantaneous uh, excavation. I don't think that we need to do that. 
Uh, to be honest, we're probably going for modular weapons just so that we can upgrade our own weapons. Resistance radio is another must-have. And we do have a few data pet de uh, decryptions that aren't too bad. So let's go for modular weapons for now. And there is the supply rate I was hoping we would get. That's our um, uh, our huge chance to get some alien alloys. With the alien alloys, we could finally go for plated armor. Uh, we are only two days away from modular weapons, but hmm. yeah, we might want to finish uh, those just so that I can modify the weapons, and then we will go for plated armor. But we need to win it first and foremost. Luckily, we got a side trip on our side, um, Shadow Squad, which means everyone gets an extra conceal ability so that we can ambush twice. So let's take a look at our available soldiers before we end today's episode. So yeah, we got everyone except the bones. So Sharpshooter, Specialist, Ranger, Grenadier is probably what we're going to see in the next mission. And maybe we're even going to get two more promotions to sergeant. Maybe. In terms of optimizing our time here, I think Skulljack definitely takes the priority. That way we do half the Skulljack and can use it. We can then move over to the power relay. School check in six days. Yeah, I think that it ties out nicely. Once the school check is done, we can just put the engineer to the power relay. Um, both of these are going to be done approximately at the same time. We can then use the engineers to continue clearing alien debris down here. Well, that's an easy one, uh, just so that we do have enough space. And very soon, we then need to use the school check in order to um, school check an advent officer and essentially get the access to uh, the codex and with that uh, the shadow um, lab because i definitely want to build that next good which brings us to the end of today's mission if you enjoyed the content feel free to um, hit the subscribe button and leave a like or a comment down below uh, today's question is going to be which uh, of the starting units um, let's say in the first two to three months are the ones that you find most annoying and why I'd like to hear your opinion and uh, see you in the next run. Bye-bye.